Thanks so much, Pastor Mike and folks. You know, it's this is truly my favorite church family anywhere. I don't actually really have a church family in Tennessee because I'm never there, you know, so <laughs> there's no chance to kind of establish any kind of rapport with people. So I just, uh, but uh, I probably come here more than I go to my church in Tennessee. So <laughs> thanks to Pastor Mike for having me in a lot. Uh, some of you uh, have heard this story before, but uh, this whole houseboy thing, how it got started, because um, I'd come up and stay with my friend Paul, you know, and, you know, we kind of all chip in and we do stuff. So the first started with, with when Pastor Mike would call the house, you know, and I'd answer the phone. So he said, Paul has Chuck Gerard answering his phone. <laughs> and then one thing led to another. So Paul and I started to make a little uh, comical photos and we'd stage them, you know. <laughs> So, like, Paul would be out in the Houseboy series. Houseboy series. There's a whole series of these pictures. So we'd put Paul out in the lawn. You know, he's sipping lemonade, and I'm running the lawnmower, right? <laughs> and I have one where, uh, <clears throat> where um, he's all tucked into his bed, and I'm reading <laughs> to him a little little fairy tale. <laughs> it's just stuff like that. You know, he's, he's, uh, I'm serving him his breakfast. and uh, So it became a joke, and we'd send one to Pastor Mike every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but always Paul's luxuriating, you know, so so that's where that came from. Well, I have so much to attend to this morning that I don't know where to start, so I'll just start. But uh, Pastor Mike asked me to sing some Christmas songs, but I, I think I won't this morning because time will be limited. And rather than singing a Christmas song, I'd rather have Paul and Noreen come up. You guys prepared? And uh, <clears throat> I want them to do uh, the, the song we do that's we're probably most familiar with it, isn't that it's better than some other song, but is a song called I Will that all of you know. I will love you forever. <clears throat> and, uh, <clears throat> but do you want to do a song of your own, Paul? Would you like to? Uh, or? Do you feel led? We, we could. I, actually, um, you know, I always like these, but um, because of time, I, I think probably not. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll give yeah. we'll give Noreen we'll a good you, good will. fat violin yeah. solo. Yeah. Make sure she's well heard out front. Okay. Trusting one two three trusting. We're gonna need more keyboard, I think. that in relationship to the voice because we didn't actually get a sound check. Is that loud enough? Test, test, test and on, 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 on. Enough piano? Sounds good. Okay. Just looking at the musician here. <laughs> she sits over here. I, I look at her and I go, ah. She just sits there, makes it up as she goes along. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I have a daughter that can do that too. And uh, yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. I I put money in the offering, and I thought, I almost, I'm not sure if this is my offering or for the church. So either I, either I gave to myself and I'll get it back, <laughs> or you guys will get it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Water by Claudia today. All right. <laughs> so anyhow, this, this uh, I don't know. I don't have a backstory on this song, I Will. Um, just a very poetic little song. I'm not very poetic. Usually I'm more practical with my lyrics, uh, more teaching or lesson oriented, but uh, this one's just sort of whimsical. I will love you forever. I will need you forever. I will want you forever till the end of time. Try it with me. Love you forever and I think we need more piano for me. Need you forever and I will want you forever to the end of time. I will love you forever and I will need you forever and I will want you forever to the end. inside my heart 
meditations and works of art, silent pictures of grace and beauty unfolding, secret colors that none can see, holy things between you and me. These are some of the things meant only for you. forever till the end of time I will love you forever and I will need you forever and I will want you forever till the end of time there are songs no one else will hear I try to catch them but they disappear moments of beauty passing beyond me sounds of silence in the still of night symphonic passages of great delight fleeting glimpses of a time that still is beyond I love you forever forever and I want you forever till the end of time. Sing it with us, come on. I will love you forever and I will need you forever and I will want you forever till the end of time. Come on, Lord. By the way, uh, Paul and I have chili shirts on today because Christmas is about chili for me. <laughs> no, actually, someone had brought some shirts to the back for the church, I guess. Just and uh, so I usually don't take stuff like that because I, but I saw the chili shirt and it just said, "Chuck, take me. This is for you." <laughs> so we're the chili kings. The chili kings. Yeah, right, huh? You know, I think what the problem is. I forget your name back at the board there. I need to learn your name. Wanda, okay, wonderful Wanda, okay. Um, I think the problem is that the keyboard's not in the monitor very much. That's probably, because I'm thinking, it, you know, it doesn't have any support up here for me. It, did that bring it up up front? Yeah, because I don't want it more... Yep. Big difference. Okay, now I even have to re EQ the piano here a little bit. That's the problem. <clears throat> I'm glad we solved it. Um, I'm going to start a campaign. You know those Kickstarter things they do, that kind of deal, Indiegogo? I'm going to do one of those pretty soon to try to raise some money to do a new album. And uh, So I'm going to share one of my songs that I'm going to do on the, on the new album. 
This is actually kind of based on Psalms. A lot of it is directly out of Psalms. And then I added some of my own thoughts. Um, so that's all. Show me your ways Teach me your paths Cause me to learn When to cry, when to laugh Show me your heart As you purify mine Give me your faith when I have no sign Guide me in truth As I walk in your ways Lift up my eyes To the heavens above My hope is in you All the day long is weak and show yourself strong cover in blood blood my failure and sin cover in blood the darkness within my heart is deceived my mind unrenewed I fall on your mercy my hope is in you confide in me Lord for I am your slave be gracious to me when I am afraid when troubles of life have so multiplied you are my refuge in you will I hide we who put trust in your holy name will not be abandoned will never be shamed who then is the one who obeys your command he's the one who is blessed who inherits the land to him you will make your covenant known the snare will not hold him he won't stand alone show me your way Teach me your paths Cause me to learn When to cry, when to laugh Show me your heart As you purify mine Give me your faith When I have no sign Show me your way Show me your way few little warts on it there, but <clears throat> uh, learning a new song. You know, I hate reading my lyrics, but man, it takes a long time to get it on the Velcro there. I'll tell you, the, the Velcro's, you know, it's just how Velcro gets when it doesn't stick, you know. Uh, anyhow, um, you know, this is, I was thinking about saying this when I was sitting down there and I forgot to, so I'll say it now. It's a compliment to your church. I was going to say when, when a new restaurant opens and the food is great, you know, they line the streets. And then if the food stays great, 
They keep lying on the streets. Have you been to restaurants where you just never can get in? There's a Mexican restaurant in L.A. that's like that, and you have to like get down there like 45 minutes before you want to eat because the food is so good. Well, here's the best food in town. Why aren't they lining up outside trying to get in, right? You know why? Because they think that Denny's is really good food. Right? No, really, think about it, you know. Why does a restaurant that's, you know, I'm kind of a foodie, so I'm not a real fan of Denny's or some of those places. But the people just pack those places because they don't, you know, well, A, they're cheap, so they don't, you know, they can't afford the good steakhouse maybe, so I understand that side of things. But uh, this is this is Ruth Chris right here, right? You know what that is? This is Ruth's Chris Steakhouse right here, and they should be lining up to come get the great food here. I just I always marvel that this place isn't just jammed to the to the walls with people like we did at Calvary where we put people in the aisles, man. We had the fire marshals coming in to get people out of the aisles because it was illegal, and actually one or two of the fire marshals got saved coming into, you know, by coming into Calvary <laughs> Chapel. So anyhow... Um, Oh, man, it's so weird because I have a number of things I wanted to I, I wanted to share a little word with you, but let's do some music first. What I, wa what I think we'll do this morning is we'll do a little oldies worship. I've been doing this lately, and uh, most of you in here will know most of these songs. Uh, there are not too many real young people in here, but uh, these are the songs of our DNA, and it's so nice to just, you know, not worry about the new songs, and I didn't catch the latest Hillsong album, so I don't know those lyrics. You know, mostly, for the most part, everyone in here will know, at least 80% of us will know these songs. And I've been doing this recently. It's just been a great time, and people have come up and told me how much they enjoy it. So we'll start with one of the, um, for me, one of the primary oldies is uh, my song, Sometimes Hallelujah. It's not really in the same category as the songs I'm going to sing, because it's really not a worship song, but kind of is, but... Let's start with that, okay? Sometimes, hallelujah. Sometimes, praise the Lord. Sometimes, gently singing our hearts in one. Let us lift our voices, look toward the sky and start to sing. Let us now return his love, just let our voices ring. Let us feel his presence. Let the sound of praises fill the air. Let us sing the song of Jesus' love to people everywhere. Sometimes all Sometimes praise the Lord, sometimes gently singing our hearts in one accord. Oh, let our joy be unconfined. Let us sing with freedom unrestrained. Let's take this feeling that we're feeling now. Take it outside these walls and let it rain. Oh, Holy Spirit, overflow. Fill us now from head to toe. We love you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And we want this world to know. 
sometimes hallelujah sometimes praise the Lord sometimes gently singing our hearts in one accord all right all together now sometimes all Sometimes praise the Lord Sometimes gently singing Our hearts in one accord Our hearts in one accord in one Alleluia 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 Alleluia
set my spirit free that I might worship thee set my spirit free that I might praise thy name let all bondage go and let deliverance flow set Spirit free to worship Thee. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. To read out and touch you and say that we love you open our ears Lord help us to listen open Shout and touch you and say that we love you. Open our ears, Lord. Help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. to see Jesus We want to see Jesus you died on the cross, Lord. We're so thankful that you gave your life for us. Though 
it hurts us that you had to suffer the pain, the shame, all the sorrow. Though we're sad you had to suffer at all. We're so thankful that you did it anyhow. We're so thankful that you rose from the dead, Lord. We're so thankful that you've risen and you live. We're so thankful that you really did it. And now we too can live. We can live with you forever. We can live. And we're just so thankful that you did it, Lord, that you did. We're so thankful that you're living in our hearts. We're so thankful that you're living right inside, Lord. We're so glad to know that you are what you said, that you're what you claim to be. And today, Lord, we put our faith in your victory. For we know you're real. And we're just so thankful that you're Jesus and that you're real. We're so thankful that you gave your life for us. We're so thankful that you live and you have risen, Lord. We're so thankful that you're Jesus, that you're real. Let's close with this. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say,
because of what the Lord has done for us. We give thanks. We give thanks. We give thanks with a grateful heart. With a grateful heart Amen Thank you Lord For the great Miracles and awesome works You've done in 2017 And this isn't a New Year's service But we're rolling into that vicinity Lord and we just thank you this year For the wonderful blessings Lord, even when you brought us through the trials and the blessing is just the lesson we learned, you know, Mike's sickness, I'm sure, has helped him to grow strong and stronger in his faith. And everyone here has situations in their lives that you allow to create in us bigger people, bigger Christians, Lord. And we thank you for that process. We hate it, but we thank you for it. <laughs> I hate it. But we also thank you for the abundance of blessings and the stuff, you know, we measure it sometimes by earthly things, but really just, Lord, the family ties and the wonderful getting together during this season of families come from long distances just to be together, as mine is this year, Lord. We thank you. And we ask for you to bless this holiday season, not let us lose sight of the reason for the season, as the cliche goes, Jesus Christ. And we believe you for a great 2018 in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, this has been a strange service for me because I've been wrestling with, you know, I, 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 you'd probably be interested in the thought processes that people go through that are up here, right? So I'm thinking, <laughs> if I do oldies worship, they're not going to hear any of my songs. And if they're fans of mine, they want to hear my songs, and they're not going to want to hear oldies worship. <laughs> but if they're really spiritual, they'll go for oldies <laughs> worship because they won't matter if they hear their favorite Chuck Gerard song or not. So, you know, then should I speak or should I just ask for requests or what should I do next? Because I don't have a plan for any service, really. And, uh, but what I think I'm going to do... <laughs> but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share a little bit of a word that I need this, this season, this period of time. And uh, I, it won't be like long, like, a, like a, uh, an actual message, but it'll be... It could be. <laughs> but I'm not planning on it at this point. <clears throat> <clears throat> I want to encourage you. Pastor Mike said some stuff earlier about resting in God. It's a tough thing to do. And I'll just be very direct with you because I do consider you guys to be a real family with me. You know, December and January are always tough months for us. It has been since 1970 when I started in the ministry. You know, because churches are doing their own deal. And they don't really want a special guest in. Some people, you know, I thought, well, when my Christmas album comes out, I'll work at Christmas time. But no, you know, nobody. And then I go on Facebook and all my friends have Christmas gigs. You know, I go, really? I'm bigger than you are. And I haven't got a gig. <laughs> Sometimes I think that, believe me, being honest. But, uh, you know, it's, but, but every year, you know what's so funny? August and, and December are probably our slowest months as far as having bookings, but I do the income taxes, and I'll often go through the books, and I'll go, August was the biggest month of the year, and we had nothing on the calendar. In December, look what God brought in. You know, we've just seen God do miracles for 47 years. You know, uh, I read Spurgeon a lot. Every day I have Spurgeon's morning and evening, and w one of his lessons was on David, how King David was fearing, I think, the battle of AI. He was going into the battle and he was worried he was going to lose. And Spurgeon's point was, why didn't he look back at the 40 years of faithfulness where God had given him all the victories of every battle? But no, he's worried about tomorrow's battle, not looking back at all the, you know, the history of God's faithfulness throughout his life. I do that. 47 years of God's faithfulness. And I failed to look back. And, and the Lord's teaching me to do this. Lord, I stand on our, not just your promise, but your deliverance of that promise for 47 years you've seen us through. Living by faith alone, you know. So anyhow, but, but, you know, we're all human and we have human failings. And so um, it's a daunting time of the year for me. I'm going back today, actually, to Tennessee, where I live. My family's all coming back. 
and uh, we'll have a great time, but it's still Christmas, and it's a big, I'm not saying this, you know, we, the offering's over, so I'm just going to talk, okay, you know. Um, you know, go back without a big financial uh, pillow to rest on, so through the whole month, you know, you have to trust God for whatever comes in, and God always comes through. But here's the deal. Here's what I want to share with you. I think I shared already that about five years ago, I, I, ha I began what was like a fresh revival of faith in my life. And I was sharing a story about where I was on my back in my daughter's house uh, at the time. She lived in Thousand Oaks, and I was in Thousand Oaks on my back, literally in sweat from fear, <clears throat> because I had a, a car in the shop that had to be fixed. I had to leave town, didn't have any money, didn't know how I was going to pay for it. And uh, she goes, going, God, what am I going to do? You know, it's one of those things where it's easy to believe God for abstract things. Oh, Lord, I know you're going to bless Aunt Susie today, you know, whatever. Because, but, but boy, when it comes down to, you know, what I've learned is the greatest, the greatest faith comes in the most practical application. So it's money and health where you actually have to see the result. You know, you can pray abstractly for someone. Lord, bless Paul today or, you know, Lord... Uh, uh, I pray for the uh, persecuted Christians. So that's kind of, you know, abstract. But boy, when it's down to the wire, and I've had some down to the wire stuff happen for me where God's delivered me at the last second, I could tell you stories. So anyhow, he was beginning this, he told me what it was. It was a fresh boot camp, school of faith, and he was going to turn me into a man of faith. Well, he's not there yet. I feel like I'm about in fifth grade now. <laughs> I started out in kindergarten, but uh, it's really based on a couple of ideas that I want to share with you this morning. First scripture is, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Now, I like to put, well, let me see, the, let me do the other one. The other one is, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. How I, how I kind of define that is trust in the Lord with all your heart and stop trying to figure things out in the natural because you don't have enough information to make a proper decision or come up with a really good escape plan, right? Exit strategy or whatever, right? So... If we go to a higher source and we just say, God, you know the beginning from the end, and, and if I can just now rest in you and cast the care of that upon you, and rest, as Pastor Mike said, in your, the surety of your word, then all that anxiety goes. I, I almost, not every day, but quite often, I, part of my prayer time in the morning is binding fear and doubt because there's no place for them in our thinking. You know, if, if they're there, they're coming from the devil. So, and if you do that, I believe in you combine spirits. So if you do that, you bind these spirits, you throw them out, and uh, the attitude and the mood changes. Because I need to learn to be a man of faith that can look at any situation and say, as a grown man, you know, not like, oh, God, would you please? It's like, oh, God, you're going to do it. Thank you. I thank you in advance. You know, I'm your man. You're my God. You're always come through. You're going to come through now. Now, cast the care of the situation upon him. I like to put the word control in place of care because this is kind of what we do. Cast the control of your situation. See, when you're worrying about it, when you're making plans, you're in fear, oh, what am I going to do? Then you're trying to control the situation. And, it's, and God can't actually move while you're doing that. I can see God so many times looking down and saying, I don't know why you're doing that. I have such a better way. If you just <laughs> stop that, you know. Like when they, say, when they say, oh, he's doing a mighty work for God. That's not a measure of success in God. He's doing a mighty work for God, okay. Well, who, where did the idea come from? And I think God does. He looks down and says, okay, I'll bless that. But I had something so much better in mind if you would just sought me for exact instruction of what I want you to do in your ministry. I don't believe God wastes ministry time, and if you're out there doing something in the flesh, kind of, he's still going to bless it. I do believe that. He's going to use whatever is around. He's a great economist. 
You know, some people will balk when I say this, but tons of hippies began to seek Jesus because of a heretical musical called Jesus Christ Superstar. And some people say, well, God wouldn't use that terrible, you know, doctrinally wrong thing, you know. Uh, he has to, yeah, he did. He did with a lot of Christians, not so much me, but a lot of hippies I know started getting their interest in Jesus because of Jesus Christ Superstar. So God uses a lot of weird stuff to get to us. Whatever, whatever's there, whatever's available. He uses your pain. He uses your failure to get to you. You know, you would say, well, God wouldn't use failure. Failure is not of God. No, but God can make failure bring you to a place of God, see? So I really believe that. And I've seen it in my own life so many times, you know. So anyhow, here's the, the takeaway. Uh, this season, you know, what I've got to do, what you've got to do, is truly cast the control of all the stuff I'm worried about. And I am a worry wart, you know. And really, truly let God take control. Where I can wake up in the morning, and I may have to go through my gymnastics and say, okay, I bind fear, I bind doubt. I do it a lot. In fact, it's, it's really funny. When I'm doing really well, morning is a really good thing. Because I sit in bed and I think, oh, yeah, you know. But when things are a little tight, then I start, oh, what am I going to do? You know. And so I can't even pray like that in bed when I'm like that because I just sit there and I'll be worrying and fretting. So I get up then, plant my feet, and that's when I sort of walk around. I, sometimes I have a little uh, easy chair in a walk-in closet in my house where I can go in and call a prayer room. And sometimes I go in there. But sometimes I like to pace when I pray. It seems I could get more kind of into it if I'm physical, you know. And then bind the fear, bind the doubt, and then learn. Here's, here's really what I want you to do. Learn to take away the place of rest. That's what's hard. To really rest and just say, okay, I'm not worrying about it. Here's what's hard for, you know, Mike, Paul, I like to believe we're alpha males, Scott Crawford. We're providers. We're hunters and gatherers. We pay the rent. The woman cooks, no, no. In, in, in my house, believe me, in my house it goes both ways because of the way we live. I, I do a lot of dishes. In fact, my wife's borderline handicapped, so I do most of the, uh, the kitchen work and all that stuff. But, but we're, we're built, you know, to take control of the situation and to bring in the money and to provide for the family. And it's a tough thing for a guy like us to have to say, Lord, I'm at the end of my rope. Let's say it was money. I don't have a thing in sight. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I trust you to come through. And I cast the care and the control of the situation upon you. Now you've done that, but now you've got to rest. You've got to stop worrying. You've got to just, you know, that's a good time to get into the Word and just start reading the Word and let that feed you and build your faith. Uh, it's a tough process, though. And this real heavy boot camp has been going on for about five years now. And I really, truly do feel I've graduated a little bit. Every year I have a better attitude. It's almost funny because the Lord almost brings these things in cycles. I say, Lord, didn't you just do this? Didn't I pass that? Can I go? It's like the Israelites going around the mountain, you know. Again, <laughs> again, okay, till you get it, you know. But it's always for our good. And God always wants to build us with these trials and temptations. And we'll fail. But it doesn't mean we don't try again, right? That's what it's all about. You know, like repenting. People think, oh, I've repented so many times for this sin. Sexual sin, let's say. I've repented so many times, and I still go back and do it. And blow, I, How long can I? Well, what are your options? You know, Okay, I'm through repenting. I'm going for it. Or repent again, right? You have to forgive 70 times 7, so repent, repent, repent. You know, till It'll start to build. And you'll get victory over that sin. There's a lot of different ways you can pray about that kind of stuff, you know, to take authority over the de demonic forces that cause you to stumble, to resist the devil and he'll flee. There's lots of, of stuff in the Bible that tells us how to deal with these kind of things. So I pray for you this new year for you to be in rest, resting in the Lord, confident in his ability to provide for every need, to heal every physical need, that's a tough one, too, healing, you know. We've all prayed for countless people that have died. I have, you know. Now, when they're really old, it's one thing. In fact, I always, that's the only time I say, Lord, it might be your will to take them home. But if it's not, 
and I pray for healing because you have more years to them. You know? And every time I pray for anybody to get healed, and believe me, I've, I've seen some living corpses that I've prayed for. I've had people, you know, because I'll be in town, I'll do a concert, and maybe the pastor will say, you know, my friend is in cancer ward, and he's going to die any day. Would you come sing for him? And I walk in, and there's this uh, literally a living corpse. You know, the, how you've, some of you have seen people in that stage of cancer. It looks like you're dead already. And they say, he hasn't moved for two weeks. And I'll pull out a guitar, and I'll start singing sometimes hallelujah, and they stir a little bit. And they'll say, oh, man, now he hasn't responded to anything for two weeks. See the power of music. It's kind of a different subject, but, but still, then I'm supposed to pray for them, right? And I'm looking at him, and in the natural, there's no way. You know, I'm, my mind is going, this guy's gone, man. He's, he's going to heaven if he's a Christian, you know. And if he's not, then it really bothers me because if, if they know that he's not a believer, that's a tough thing, you know. I don't know how all that's going to play out, but wow, that's a scary place. But if they're a believer, you know, it's not, not that big a deal. They're just going over to a much better place. I have a feeling when we all get over there, we're going to go, what was I waiting for? This is so crazy. I was trying to hold on to that. If I could have jumped off a bridge if I knew this, you know. It's probably what it'll be like. You know, it's like in the, mov in the movies, they, they look and, whoo, whoo. You know how they get, you've seen those kind of movies where they get a change or something. It's going to be awesome, you know. So anyhow, I pray. Here's my my point. I pray for everyone when I do pray for healing or anything. I pray with full conviction. My I don't can't listen to my mind. I have to just pray by sheer willpower sometimes, and then by you know by the believing the Holy Spirit's leading the prayer to pray for absolute healing, not waffling. Not oh, if it by, be Thy will, Lord, let, heal them. I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, by, your, by his stripes, you are healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive healing right now. I bind cancer. I rebuke cancer, whatever it is. Cancer can't live in this body. And you, and you put yourself on the line because if they die, then everybody goes, oh, his prayer didn't work. But if you go in there and pray a wishy-washy prayer, you know, then he dies. They'll probably say, well, that was a spiritless prayer. Non-committal, you know, you can't win, kind of, right? As in so many things. Let's see how our time is. I got to fly back to Nashville, uh, in, uh, out of San Jose, uh, a little later this afternoon. So I'm going to wrap it up. But thanks for listening to me. And I wondered now, because we do have a few minutes left, if anybody has a special Chuck Gerard love song tune they want to hear that they can't live without, uh, we close out with it. If you, oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, the warrior. Wow, that's an amazing idea. <laughs> what was yours? Oh, love song. Okay. Oh, I didn't hear you. Yes, I'm, I'll do the warrior too. We have time, right? Then what was yours? Was it Paul? Who had their head? Oh, Helen. and a grinner of heart. I guess I am. And I tried out every new thing that I could find But my life turned into one disaster Without the Lord I almost blew my mind I was sitting in the front seat Trying to
prophet you are, Pastor Mike. See, it didn't even occur to me that that was a song about what I just preached. Right? That's pretty cool. Hey, just real quick, of course, I have CDs back there, the same ones. Pray for me to get this campaign going and get enough money. I've got some really stuff I'm really excited about to record. I'm not done yet, Mike. <laughs> Unless you need me to be. I will if you need me. I'm feeling better now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you are. They start crowding me, you know. <laughs> back, boy, back. No. Uh, my, the CDs, is, you know, if you don't want to buy one for yourself, buy one for Christmas for somebody. But I also have some uh, brochures in there. There's a trip to Israel that's going to actually be kind of a, a classic Christian artist cruise. Uh, currently, it's, uh, we're, we're thinking Love Song may be going, at least the three Nucleus guys. From oh. there. And um, uh, I think... Um, Paul Clark signed up, and at the very least, I'll be going. And then if any of you guys are friends with the Chrysogus brothers on Facebook, it's their tour, and uh, it's their 50th birthday, so we'll be going. You can p uh, That doesn't actually tell you who's on the tour. It just t talks about me. It's not my tour. I'm just a part of it, but it'll give you the particulars, and maybe you pray about coming to Israel next year. Um, you guys go to Israel, right? Oh, yeah. Every year? Yeah. Do you go every year? Because I usually like to check first before I tout mine, because if you got one going, I don't want to take <laughs> away your people, you know. Um, okay, so let's wrap this up real quickly. the original track.
You know, that was never considered to, very seriously by us. We, we use it to intro our, our album because it kind of, the message is for you as ears to hear. Uh, but that song went to number one in the uh, Philippines in Manila. And we went over there for five days and played at Rosal Stadium for like 15,000 people a night. And thousands came to the altars and thousands for years after the missionaries. They, when they someone would get saved, they had a little questionnaire. They said, what was your first exposure to the gospel and many times he said for 10 15 years after that people would say the love song festival which was what it was called yeah paul Wow. It's one of the biggest songs ever written. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks, Mike. All right, let's get you guys out of here. Check my chords here. This is the passion in music, passion of the Christ in music. There's a long, low cry from the heaven.
on two silent figures there as they roll the stone. The depth that this brother has, he's a deep well. And Chuck, I want to say to you, you were my hero before I met you. We loved your music. It was one of the best things ever, and it blessed us and all those who we shared it with. But after all of this experience and getting to know you really well, you are a greater hero you are a greater hero. I love you, Mike. Thank you. Amen. Today we had the opportunity to be here today. You'll be able to talk about it and say, I was there. I had the chance to hear some of the inside things that God has done in this great man of God. And we just love you. And you have left us with a rich deposit and a way for us to be able to enter in the Christmas season. Can you say amen with the real spirit and the real joy of the Lord in our hearts? And it has been a wonderful, marvelous time. And we're so blessed by it. And I see that um, one of your big fans and his wife slipped in today. And that's the pastor of our Hispanic ministry and that's Pastor Carlos and his dear sweet wife, Rachel. Welcome them. I, I had a feeling you were going to sneak in here. Their service isn't until this afternoon, see? But I thought, well, he saw the posters up, and, and I got a chance. You know, it's a chance. She's going to be there pretty much. But, you know, they love worship. They love to get in the presence of God. And, and dear ones, I have to say, Chuck Gerard to my way of thinking, is maybe one of the greatest worship leaders, worshipers unto the Lord that I've ever had the experience of being in his ministry and under it. And we have been really blessed today. Can you say amen? Amen, amen and amen and amen. Thank you.